Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Today is going to be a bow along and we are doing, as you can see by the ribbon, a patriotic 4th of July themed bow. We have this really cute star print ribbon, which if I can find it, I will link it below. Um, I cannot link this one, however, because I actually made this ribbon with uh, iron-on transfer. So I can't link this one, but I will link this one. Um, and then we have this image to go with. I will link this one down below if you are interested. It is from Jazzy Caps, so I will link her down below. But if you can tell by just the two sizes of ribbon, we are going to be doing a pinwheel bow along. So to start, you're obviously going to need your pinwheel templates. I will link these down below in the description where you can print these off. And then I just back them up on cardboard. This is a priority mail box that I had gotten something in the mail and rather than just throw it out, I repurposed it. So you will need your templates. You will need one and a half inch row grain and you will also need seven eighths inch grow grain. Um, I tend to like to back up my pinwheels on um, the 7 8 so I will be using um, dark royal blue to go along with this. This is from Ribbons and Bows Oh My, um, but I will link that below as well. And you will also need needle and thread. You will need a pair of scissors, lighter, hot glue gun, the basics. So to get started, we're going to do, oh, you're also going to need some clips. To get started, we are going to do the four inch template first. And I know if you've been here a while, you have seen how to do pinwheels, but I will quick go over how to do this. I take the ribbon here and I line it up that way, just so you can see. Um, and I leave a little bit hanging over. Not too much though, because most of this you're just gonna end up cutting off anyway. And then I put a clip there to hold the ribbon in place and then just wrap around the template. Make sure your ribbon touches but does not overlap. And that's what you want. You want one end, one full wrap, and then one wrap to get the top. So you'll have three here, two in the back. And then just cut off the excess. Remember to leave yourself a little bit of a tail it's better to leave yourself a little bit of tail and cut off what you don't need than to not have enough and you're short. As usual, I heat seal the ribbon before I put it back just so that it is ready to go the next time I go to grab it. And then heat seal that out. And clip the end. We will put that one over there for now so that we can do the three and a half inch templates. 
Pinwheels are just really simple, easy, cute bows. They don't take a lot of ribbon, so they're good to make on a uh, limited ribbon supply. They're also pretty easy, so they're a really great starter bow. If you were just starting out in bows, I really recommend doing pinwheels. Um, unfortunately, my ribbon is facing the wrong way, but that's okay, and I'm sorry about that. That was my phone. We will just ignore that for now. And like I said, I double layer the ribbon just because I don't like the white on a different colored background so and like the four inch template you line it up on the top and then wrap around the template just like that this won't be upside down on the finished bow we'll just flip it I cut that crooked. I always heat seal the ribbon before I put it away so it is ready to use the next time. And it also prevents fraying. Um, especially when you have it rolled like this, it will fray here on either end of the rubber band if you don't heat seal it. So I always seal it. Just takes an extra second, but it makes a lot of difference. Let me even up where I cut crooked here. heat seal all right come in with our needle and thread um, as I've said before in previous tutorials um, I only use upholstery thread. In fact, this is the brand that I use, um, Coates and Clark. As you can see, it says upholstery right there. Um, it's pretty thick thread and you can yank on it really, you can yank on it hard and it doesn't snap. So, and then just start sewing up that channel your stitches don't have to be perfectly evenly spaced. Don't worry if they're not. I just use a running stitch. This is a doll needle, so it's a little bit longer than your typical needle. See, as you can see, it's a pretty long needle, but it comes in handy when you're doing bows like this or things like um, the corker bow. Um, there is also another bow that I will be doing soon, um, a loopy puff bow where this comes in handy as well. I just prefer a longer needle to be perfectly honest. So just finish sewing up the center. Always, every video, <laughs> my thread gets stuck somehow. Okay. And then I wrap 
Let me see if I can bring my camera up just a little bit different angle. There we go. I wrap my thread around the ribbon in the center of that channel. And if you've been here long enough, you know I always have a copious amount of thread on my needle. Um, so, wrap it once around completely and then I wrap it up to the top. Pulling it taut but not tight. See, I can still move it, but it's holding everything in place. Just take the clips off, slide the ribbon out of the template, and I lay it flat down on the table and make sure that the thread is between my two fingers here. And then just pull on the thread. This is where the upholstery thread is by far the best thing to use. As you can see, I'm pulling pretty tight and it is not snapping. It's a little bit more expensive thread, but it is so worth it. Okay, and then I just wrap the thread around a couple of more times. I usually take this point to fiddle with the bow, make sure that it looks the way I want it to, and then come and tie off the back. I just push the needle up under the thread and then wrap the thread around like twice. It's all you really need. And then finish pulling the needle and the thread the rest of the way through. Ugh. Pull it nice and tight and there you go. You have your four inch pinwheel. You can stop here if you don't want to do a two layer pinwheel and just trim up however you want the uh, tails, add it to a clip, wrap the center, put your um, bottle cap on and call it a day or whatever center embellishment you use. Um, I, however, would like to do a two layer. Let me quick knot off my thread again. I'm just going to trim up the ends. I'm not going to do anything fancy. It's just going to be a straight cut. If you're doing a single layer, you could take it, not trim up the ends at all. Just do like slant cuts, V cuts, something a little bit more uh, exciting than flat straight cuts to the ends. Since I'm layering this, we are just going to do some basic straight cuts and call it a day, at least on this layer. All right, now we are going to put that aside for now and work on 
the second layer. Now I realize this is upside down and I will show you what I mean by flipping it once we are finished. Copious amounts of thread. <laughs> when I work, I tend to make several projects at one time. So I like to have plenty of thread available so I don't have to waste time constantly re-threading my needle. However, that happens sometimes. Just have to go back and untangle it. Um, now, the problem with making your own ribbon with um, iron-on ribbon transfers is that the ribbon is a bit thicker. So you are going to find you can't do a running stitch quite the way you would be able to with um, standard grow grain. So it does take a little bit more time to um, sew up, but it is a great option if you don't have the ribbon you are looking for. Um, if you want my recommendation for transfers to use, I use Avery. I don't do a whole lot of iron-on transfers. So, let's see, I can't even get the needle to bend the way I need it to. So, I don't do a whole lot of iron-on ribbon transfers, so it's not a huge cost issue for me to buy Avery because like I said I don't do a lot of them there probably are cheaper alternatives if you're going to be doing it in bulk I just don't um, I will say though for the iron-on transfers The light colored ones, which I am using now, um, the image does need to be mirrored. Um, I do all of my designing in GIMP just because it's a free software. Um, you can do it in Photoshop. Um, if you Google ribbon templates, you should be able to find uh, some. You can find them on um, Pinterest as well. That's actually where I found the ones that I use. Um, they are not available anymore, but I'm pretty sure somebody has them somewhere. Okay, one more stitch. And then like before, we're going to wrap the center. one full wrap and then one part way up and if you notice I do stagger it over the knot so the first wrap will go to one side the second will go to the other side and it just helps give an even bow sorry I knocked my camera and like before lay the ribbon out have the thread between your fingers and just pull together it is a little bit harder with the iron-on transfer just keep at it it will do it eventually and then 
finish it off the way you did with the other one. However, I am going to tell you not to cut your thread once you finish knotting off the back. Just leave it alone and that will become apparent in a moment. And we are going to come trim up the edges and like with like the other one, I am just going to do a basic straight cut. other side and there we go we have the pinwheel and like I said um, we actually started here you can see the knot there that we started so it should be like this if I didn't have to flip it over but we just flip it over. Before we go any further, I'm going to take my hot glue gun and just run a line of glue to glue the loose edges together. I seem to be very popular today. <laughs> it's the third time since I've been filming that my phone's gone off. I apologize. Now remember, your thread is still attached. You have not clipped it off. All right. Now we're going to take the base layer and the top layer and you're going to put them together. Make sure that the centers line up and take that thread that it's still connected to the top one, run it along and you are just going to use it to wrap a few times to pull the two of them together. You could glue the layers together. I just find that this holds it together better. Plus, it gives you a chance to, again, cinch pretty tight because pinwheels just look better with a tighter center, especially if you do not put any kind of embellishment on the bow. If you just leave it by itself, it looks so much better with as tight of a center as you can manage. And then just tie it off on the back. I'm going to clip the extra off. Get my needle and thread out of the way. Just quick tie it off so I don't lose the needle. I've done that a couple of times where I've pulled it off of my table by accident and then I've lost the needle and I've had to go search for it. Not a fun time. All right, now, you can leave it like this. That is your personal preference. I just tend to like my pinwheels to um, stay perfectly aligned. So what I do is I just 
center the top on the bottom. And for these loops, I just put a dot of glue, pinch them together just 30 seconds or so, just to make sure that it sticks. And then go around the bow. I find this gives the best look to the bow and keeps it looking good longer than just letting it roam wild. All right, and for these ends where we did the straight cut, Again, you want to center it, and because it's that, I just run another line of glue. Center up that. And there you go. You want to take the clip of your choice right now. I have this lined alligator clip that I am going to use. And yes, I attach the clip before I wrap the center and I will explain why in a moment. And you just add the clip to the bow, hold it down to make sure that it adheres properly. And a little bit of excess glue you can it off. I have a lot of excess glue. I do not know what happened here. Um, if you have to, just use your nail to scrape. You can also take your lighter and just carefully run your lighter over. And take the ribbon that you're using to wrap the center. This is uh, 3 8 again in that dark royal blue. I just put a little line of glue right there on the end. Open up the clip. And lay the ribbon down inside the clip. So you can see right there and push down for a moment just to make sure that it fully adheres. Close the clip and then just wrap the ribbon around the center, bring it to the back under the clip again. I close the clip at this point. sometimes depends but if I'm ready to glue what I do is I just hold thread another uh, the, the ribbon like this open up the clip keep keep it taut you don't want it loose dab a glue in close the clip and I pinch while pulling onto the ribbon I pull this away from the bow and I push down. Helps make sure that the thread proper and uh, the ribbon properly adheres. Cut off the excess. And there you go. You have a pinwheel.
Hi, sorry, it my camera just stopped recording for whatever reason. So you have a pinwheel. You can stop here and leave it just like this. But this is a bow along and we go full out extra for these. So what I am going to do is I'm going to take some of this diamond wrap that I got at Dollar Tree, as you can see. Looks just like what you can get at Dollar Tree. And for some reason I decided wrapping a rubber band around this was a good idea. But it just comes on a roll like this. I am going to lay it over here just to add a little bit of sparkle but I don't want all three I don't want all three of these uh, layers so I am going to measure out how much I need and I'm going to chop it off I'm going to cut a second piece because if I'm doing one tail, I always do the uh, other tail as well. Alright, I only want two rows instead of three, so I'm going to cut a row off. I will put that aside because I will end up using it in another bow at some point later on down the road. I always keep scraps of things. And what I do is I do two rows of hot glue, just like that. And attach the um, rhinestone mesh to the bow. You will have some glue that seeps out. And what I do is I just quickly run my lighter over. Same with the edges. But you have one tail. And you're just going to do the same with the other tail. really careful you won't have a lot of glue seeping out through the mesh but sometimes you do it's not a big deal just run your lighter over and it will melt the glue back again and then you won't see it so that is the bow and we are just going to add the center as I've shown you in a previous tutorial I put um, felt circles on the back of all of my bottle caps. Uh, this one is a plastic one. I don't know where to get this because I got this in a grab bag of stuff. But I add felt circles to the back of all of my bottle caps just to help them adhere. They have a tendency to pop off sometimes in higher heat if you don't do this. Or with several years of use. I'll just put glue on the felt circle. Glue it to the back of the model cap. And then just add a dollop of glue right there. And attach the cap and as you can see I'm just holding it down for a moment to make sure that it adheres and there you go we have done our 4th of July patriotic bow along your bow is ready to be sold given as a gift worn 
however you know whatever you want to do with it at this point it is up to you um you can further embellish this you can add some of these round rhinestones to the front of this or you can take some cute little bows i think i am going to take a little bow actually Let's see do i have a dark blue one does not look like I have a dark blue one. So I think I'm going to take that little whitish color one. Um, I do not recommend using hot glue for this. I would only use E6000 hot glue for some reason, especially with the metal caps, does not hold very well. I've never done a plastic cap. So I'm going to treat it in the same way that I do the um, metal caps and use E6000. Um, take a moment just to figure out where you want to place this. Line it up, figure out where you want to place it and figure out how many of these little bumps you're going to need to put glue on. Just run a little bit of glue there. Um, almost always this is too much glue straight out of the tube. So I take one of these little orange sticks. You can buy them in Walmart or any place that sells nail stuff. And just pull some of the excess off. And then lay the bow down. Just like that. And there you go. We have a finished pinwheel. Thank you guys for tuning in to this patriotic bow along. Um, I have a Father's Day one coming up. And then after the Father's Day one, I will be doing a video for my viewers who sell their bows. Uh, this one will be how to package up your bows for shipping from start to finish. However, if you are making bows to give as gifts, that might be a good video for you to watch as well. I will show you how I package my bows up that I sell. And I will show you from start to finish how I package them up, what goes into the packages, and um, <clears throat> all of that wonderfulness. <coughs> Excuse me. So here you go. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the little bow along. I will link what products I can below. Um... I don't think I'm going to be able to link this, but I will show again really quick what this is. It is the Floral Garden Diamond Wrap from Dollar Tree. You can get similar products like this in Michaels. I'm not sure about Walmart, and I'm almost positive you can get it in Hobby Lobby as well. But this stuff is from Dollar Tree, and it works just as good. But thank you guys for tuning in and I will see you the next time when we do the Father's Day bow along. I hope everybody is staying safe during this time that um, while we're all on uh, lockdown, stay at home, uh, shelter in place, whatever you want to call it, while we are all dealing with this, I hope everybody is staying safe. You are well and that you continue to stay safe and be well during all of this have a wonderful day and i will see you on the next video bye